Jesus say, Come on toward me and rest. Lay down, old weary one, lay down your head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was so weary, worn, and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give the living water, thirsty ones to hold down and drink and live. I came to Jesus and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. In the waters of baptism, Kay died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. Let us pray. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery your servant Kay, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to invite everyone to be seated. I'd like to invite Maggie forward to offer the first reading. Our first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verse 6a, 7 through 9. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples. The web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people, he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On this day, it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Nothing I shall want. 
Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me. He revives my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path for the sake of his name. Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil would I fear for you are with your crook and staff will give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a table before me sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. shepherd there is nothing I shall want I'd like to invite Julia forward to offer the second reading A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. How will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, rather, was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. The way that God sees is different than the way the world sees, isn't it? The world evaluates us on our wealth, our fame, our power. But God sees differently. He evaluates us not on all of those external things, but he peers deep inside of our heart and our soul and he sees the light that is there. The light indeed that he placed there when we were created, when we were given life for the first time. He sees not only deep into our heart and soul, but he also doesn't evaluate us on a moment. He, on the contrary, sees in a moment the beginning, the end, and the middle all at once. Now, 90 years ago, Kay was brought into church in the arms of her parents, and she was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the priest at that point told her to keep the flame of faith alive in your heart so that when the Lord comes, you may greet him with lighted lamp. Now, what I have been told is that flame burned brightly, very brightly, and with a true sense of equality and fairness that sometimes was interpreted as maybe too much independence. But it was a flame that burned brightly out of love. Our Lord tells us that today in the gospel reading too, the gospel that you chose for her funeral mass. In that gospel, our Lord has this intimate moment with his apostles. He tells them that he is going to be going away from them, be taken from them for a time, because he knows that is going to be difficult for them. Now, they had spent some wonderful time together. They had shared meals together. They had walked together. They had seen him cure the sick and raise the dead and do all of his wonderful miracles. They had become very close friends, family, really. And so he was warning them. He knew it was coming. 
but he also wanted to tell them the reason why. That although that day would be a dark day, a sorrowful day for them, that in fact he was going to prepare a place for them, a dwelling place, what we call a home, right? And you and I both know that especially Kay's home was not just a house. A home is something far more, more important than just a building. It's a place where all of the people that we love gather, and especially for the most important moments in our lives. Thanksgiving, Christmas, birthdays, weddings, and funerals. And so our Lord prepares them for that moment. Now, you are going to say to me, well, Kay, she lived a full life, 90 years. That is a full life, and indeed, that will be true. But her life isn't done yet. This is just but a moment. And the reality is, whether mother or sister or friend, you will miss her because you love her. Because when we say, I love you, what we are saying to that person is, I am glad that you are and I want that you always will be. And indeed, that is what you want for Kay. So what our Lord says to us today is, the reason I went away, the way, reason I gave my life on the cross was so that the doors of that home will be open to you, open to Kay. And what is it that our Lord gives us as the image of heaven, but a great banquet, a meal, a place that families gather. But this meal is one that never ends, that in fact, this is just the beginning. 90 years for our Lord is but a blink of an eye. And what he says to us and what he promises us is that one day we will all be gathered again around that banquet feast of heaven, not only enjoying the company of one another, but of course love himself, Jesus Christ, at the center of that banquet table. Don and Martha and Daniel and Emily will all be there. All those that you have lost, who have gone before you, our Lord, in the end, he makes it all right. And his gift is that gift of love, eternal joy in his presence. So we give thanks to God for that humble service that Kay served all of her life, the love that she gave to you, and we know that love never comes to an end. So let us, on the one hand, indeed be sorrowful because we miss someone we love, but also rejoice that we have a Lord that in fact tells us this is but the beginning of eternal life and eternal peace. Let us stand together now and offer our prayers and petitions. I'd like to invite Oliver forward to offer those prayers. In baptism, Kay received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our sister Kay was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your Son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love. 
and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all those whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister, Kay. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you grant all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to invite everyone to be seated for the presentation of the gifts. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Kay, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Leni sunt celi et terra, Gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, Qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. Please kneel. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Kay, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who is united with your Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. 
to him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us stand together. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. At this point, Deacon John and I will come forward to distribute Holy Communion in two lines in the center aisle. Of course, all those Catholics who are prepared to receive are welcome to come forward and receive. If you are not a Catholic, but you would like to receive a blessing, please simply come forward in one of those two lines, cross your arms across your chest, and uh, the priest or the deacon will give you a blessing.
a ransomed soul he's leading and with the verdant pastures grow with food celestial feeding confused and foolish oft I strayed but yet in love he sought me and on his shoulder gently laid and Tom rejoicing brought me Let us pray.
Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Kay may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to invite everyone to be seated for a moment. I'd like to invite Andy forward to offer his reflections. First of all, I'd like to thank you uh, all for joining us today. In Cranford, New Jersey, Catherine McIntosh Berry, Kay, was a big sister to our Aunt Marty and Uncle Dan. Kay was part of a tight-knit group of best friends that included Joyce Davis, who would later become our beloved Aunt Joyce Cusick. Kay often traveled from New Jersey to the Midwest to visit her cousins, the McIntoshes. She enjoyed lifelong friendships with the entire McIntosh clan, including a nice visit just last week from Cousin Bill. Before Kay met and married our father, Don Anderson, she studied art and worked in New York City. Kay was many things to many people, and to me and my siblings, she was a mom. As my siblings and I reminisced about my mom, her true nature became clear to me. My sister Mary captured it perfectly the other day when she said, Mom was a humble servant who lived her faith daily. As the youngest child in our family, Mom and I had lots of adventures together while my siblings were in school. One of my favorite memories was accompanying her to Michael Faraday Elementary School, where she volunteered as an aide. Faraday is a school on Chicago's west side. It's a very poor and dangerous neighborhood, and I had to think in retrospect what my father and mother must have talked about with her leaving her comfortable home in Glen Ellen to go to the west side in the mid-60s to help. <clears throat> Once a week, Mom loaded me up, and we drove to Chicago. She helped wherever they needed her. She assisted in lessons, served lunches, helped tutor kids with their schoolwork, helped teachers with their lessons plans, whatever they needed, she, she lent a hand. I watched and helped where I could. I remember asking Mom on one of our drives to or from Faraday whether this was her job. And she kindly said, no, our family is her job. She told me that she was volunteering her time and told me what volunteering meant. She told me that she didn't get paid. In fact, told me what donating meant. She was giving her own time and treasure to help these students and teachers because they needed help. She told me that our dad had worked very hard to build his business and provide for our family and that part of that provision was intended to help those less fortunate than us. Mom's donation of that time and treasure to the Faraday community is reflected in Corinthians 9-7, which reminds us that each person should give what they have decided in their heart to give, not reluctantly, nor under compulsion, because God loves a cheerful giver and mom gave cheerfully. In the late 70s, mom sat us down at 722 Hillside Avenue and informed us that her Aunt Marty would be moving from Tucson, Arizona to live with us in Glen Ellen. My general knowledge of Aunt Marty was sketchy, but I, uh, I kind of knew that she'd been a trailblazing woman who'd lived in Paris in the 20s and 30s, was, had been painting with some famous artists and generally breaking all the rules. When Aunt Marty arrived, it quickly became apparent that she was very old, wobbly, and forgetful. This was not the woman I was expecting to meet. There were three teenagers living at home at that time. 
coming and going to, to our activities, and Aunt Marty didn't really fit into our schedules well. We'd find things misplaced and could easily be put out when an Aunt Marty issue popped up and inconvenienced us. Mom was patient, both with us and with Aunt Marty. Mom showed us that providing care for an elderly family member is hard work and that this labor of love was rewarding and necessary. And Mom excelled at it. When Aunt Marty's needs required skilled nursing, Mom figured that out and with the help of Dad found her a nice nursing home where Mom and Dad and the rest of us visited her and cared for her for the remainder of Aunt Marty's life. Mom's love and care for Aunt Marty is reflected in Galatians 4.14 that says, Even though my illness was a trial to you, you did not treat me with contempt or scorn. Instead, you welcomed me as if I were an angel of God, as if I were Christ himself. Faraday and Aunt Marty are just two examples of many that I could share of how Mom was faithful in her relationships and how she lived her faith daily. Mom was the Lord's humble servant. We love you and we will miss you. Let us stand together. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Kay. May our farewell express our affection for her, may ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself. Saints of God, come to her aid. Come to meet her angels of the Lord. Receive her, her soul and present her to God, to God the Most Christ who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to Abraham's side. Receive her, her soul and present her to God, to God the Most High. Give her Father of mercies, we commend our sister Kay in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon her in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace now, we bring Kay to her place of rest. In paradisum deducant te angeli in tuo adventum 
σου είπε αν θε μαρτύρε. Ετ περτού καντρέ, εν τσιβιτάτεμ σάκτα αμιερουσαλέμ. Κόρο Αντζελόρου, τε σου σιπιάτ, ετ κουμλάτζαρο κουάντα αμπαουπερέ, ετ ερνάτ.